The story began with a heated fight scene between two friends, Sang Min and Sung Wan. Sang Min appeared to be very angry and repeatedly punched his companion, causing Sung Wan to spew blood. Sang Min was no longer a friend Sung Wan knew. Instead, Sang Min appeared to be someone else. Sung Wan told Sang Min to stop when a monster nibbled off an arm and threw Sung Wan away. Sung Wan quickly recovered his bitten arm, and in front of him was no longer his friend but Gui. Let's see what happened before that led up to this thing. Sung Wan was playing basketball with his friends one morning when Sang Min and Du He called him to school. Shortly after, Sung Wan ended the game by tossing the ball into the basket, earning the other guy's admiration. The other guy then threw the ball to Du He, but unfortunately, it hit the girl's face and caused her face to turn red. The three of them were walking and conversing when Min Su asked Sung Wan to play games after school. After that, more friends greeted Sung Wan, prompting Du He to comment that Sung Wan was well known and that they had only recently moved here. After that, a different guy who was in Sang Min's class came to talk to Sung Wan, so that guy greeted Sang Min as well. But Sang Min didn't appear to care, he only replied thoroughly and then departed first. Upon noticing this, Sung Wan instantly turned to ask Sang Min what was wrong, as he didn't look good. Suddenly, someone yelling Sung Wan's name from a distance came closer. That guy was seeking Sung Wan to collect his debt. As Sung Wan saw this, he bid farewell to his two friends swiftly and stormed away, not forgetting to make an appointment with them for lunch. Although it appeared to be the perfect start to the day, bullying was taking place in that classroom. One student sat on Sang Min's back, seized his tie, and forced him to crawl like an animal. Although everyone in the room noticed what was happening, they did nothing to stop the bully and instead stood laughing and making fun of Sang Min. The guy riding on Sang Min noticed that Sang Min wasn't walking correctly and threatened to hit him on the head. At this point, Sung Wan arrived, knocked the other man out, and asked his friend if he was okay. After being beaten, Seo In stood up and made fun of Sung Wan for saving the beauty and the men around him laughed with him. Sung Wan then questioned what the other person was doing. Seo In heard this and mocked Sung Wan's voice with an extremely sarcastic expression. Sung Wan then said he had reminded Seo In not to touch Sang Min, but Seo In said Sung Wan was nothing to make him listen. When the classroom bell rang, a buddy asked Sung Wan to hurry to class. Sung Wan abruptly turned away, leaving Seo In behind with a proud face. On the way home from school, Sangmin was questioned by Sungwen about the incident with the bully. Sungwen then advised Sangmin to call him if it occurred again. After Sangmin heard this, he yelled at Sung Wan, telling him not to act and that being around him only made Sangmin feel worse. Sangmin then asked Sung Wan if he felt he could continue to protect Sangmin, after which he urged Sung Wan to go. Sungwen instantly froze upon hearing these words. Why was this? A monster agitated Sungwen's heart beneath the reflection on the ground, telling him he could do it whenever he wanted and that if he was determined, no one could harm him anymore. When Sungwen was a kid, he played hide and seek. Because he couldn't find Sang Min and Du He anywhere, he immediately declared that he didn't want to play anymore. However, after hearing a noise to the side, he turned and believed he had located his two friends until he saw a monster eating something. The monster's glance caused Sung Wan to fall but a human could see the monster, so he caught its attention. Back in the present, Sung Wan was sitting in disbelief, pondering something, as the monster approached and asked him what he was thinking. He said that he was simply reliving the past, and passers-by avoided him because they saw him talking alone. The monster was advising Sung Wan to employ forceful means to deal with those men. Sung Wan responded that the monster had previously instructed him to build positive relationships but had now instructed him to beat them. While Sung Wen was speaking, Du He called him, crying, mentioning Sang Min, and telling him to get here right away. Sang Min was being beaten by Seo In on this side, and the companion ordered Seo In to stop or Sang Min would die. Seo In said that humans were not so easily died, therefore, they were thinking of more ways to torture Sang Min. Do He, who was hiding behind a wall, could only sob and pray that Sang Min was okay. Sang Min had been knocked to the ground and was still worried about Du He, wondering whether she had escaped. Sang Min thought back to when he was a child and the three of them were playing hide and seek. Sang Min was looking for Sung Wan when he saw him sitting on the ground, looking panicked. Sang Min went over, patted him on the shoulder, and asked him if he was okay and what was wrong. Do He was also looking for him. 
Du He then rushed over to ask Sung Wen where he had gone, as he was sweating profusely, and if he was safe, she added as she wiped the sweat from Sung Wen's face with her hand, saying he concerned them a lot, but happily Sang Min found Sung Wen and stated Sang Min was trustworthy. At this point, Sang Min opened his eyes once more and saw Du He standing in front of him. Upon seeing her, he told her not to be here. Du He said that everything was good and that she had the impression that Sung Wen was actually trustworthy after observing Sung Wen engaged in combat with the other males on the other side. Sang Min noticed that a quote from when they were kids had been changed to two different people receiving it. He questioned why it had happened this way and why Sung Wan and not him was the one who got it. At this point, a monster emerged again, saying it could smell greed and envy and considering whether to satisfy Sang Min. Sung Wan went to class the following day to look for Sang Min, but he wasn't there and hadn't even answered the phone. Do He was out walking and reflecting on what had happened the day before. She had woken up at home and was unable to phone Sang Min. At this point, she was seeking Sung Wan to inquire about the incident when she overheard Shi Yang whispering to Sung Wan. That girl was a special student. She passed past Du He, gave her a wicked smile, and walked away. Back then, Sang Min was wondering how things had ended up this way and why Sung Wan and not him had received it. His jealousy and greed caused this monster to come to life, and when he saw it, he stumbled to his feet in terror since he had no idea what the heck it was or where he was. Next to him was the laughter of that big-headed monster. They were the evil minds in Sang Min himself and what humans termed Yu Kai. They were named Gui, and they showed Sangmin a vision ahead of Sung Wan, who was fighting Seoin to protect the two. Sangmin was engrossed in jealousy over Sung Wan, and his feelings were what brought Gui here. As Sangmin heard this, he exclaimed that it wasn't real, but he didn't have time to say more when Gui created a contract and said it would help him. With the help of this contract, Gui would grant Sangmin the power to fulfill his wants and needs. The contract would only come to an end once both sides' needs and wants had been met. Gui claimed that Sangmin could use this contract to exact retribution on those who had bullied him and enjoy a leisurely life free from those bastards. When Sangmin heard these words, he continuously said no because he didn't have time to say what he wanted before Gui mentioned the girl he liked and said she would look at him again. Sangmin then knelt on the ground while holding his head and continued to say no. Suddenly, Du He called his name, but it wasn't her face, it was Gui's disguise. It stretched out to Sang Min and told him to grasp its hand and the contract would form, and Sang Min eventually reached out to Gui, so the contract was formed. At that point, Sung Wen was still battling with Seo In. After Seo In heard Sung Wen say that this was the final time he warned him and urged him not to touch Sang Min again, he punched Sung Wen. However, a sudden burst of force sent Seo in flying, and Du He also collapsed. Behind the dust was Sang Min, and Sung Wan noticed that Sang Min had transformed into an entirely new person thanks to Gui, who reigned behind Sang Min. Sung Wan then raced to Du He to defend her. It was lunchtime after a stressful class, and everyone swarmed to the cafeteria for food. This guy was walking when he noticed two girls talking about lunch and he immediately turned to face the door in order to distance himself from the two girls, practically within a radius of one meter. He stepped into class one and pulled a candy bar from his pocket and placed it on Si Young's desk, saying Si Young was the only one allowed to go near him, then he departed just before the others returned. As soon as he reached the classroom entrance, he noticed Si Young whispering to Sung Wan while the two of them were standing closely together. He wondered why this was the case and that he hated Sung Wan so much as a result. Then Sung Wen and Du He went to another location to talk, and she questioned how close he was to Si Young. Sung Wen said that they had only played baseball together once, and when Du He heard that, she remembered Si Young's earlier glance at her. Sung Wan then inquired about Sang Min's status, but Du He had not been able to contact him. Do He was concerned that something had happened to Sang Min. As soon as she awoke yesterday, she found herself at home and asked Sung Wan what had happened before that. Sung Wen subsequently changed the topic by mentioning that he had some fried chicken coupons and asking Du He to join him for dinner. Du He heard this, claimed it didn't matter anymore, and asked Sung Wen to go to Sang Min's house after school. Sung Wen responded that he was busy and that he would phone Du He after he was finished, and he warned her not to go there alone. Sung Wen then turned to leave while recalling how Si Young had earlier instructed him to go to the rooftop alone after school and to bring Gui Yi with him. Sung Wen wondered if this was a trap because Si Young knew about Gui Yi. 
Gui immediately showed up and said that if it was, Gui wouldn't let Si Young be alone. Sung Wen then asked Gui if there were any others nearby. Gui replied that there weren't many, but it sensed something else, perhaps something stronger than Gui or better at hiding its location. Upon hearing this, Sung Wan instantly claimed that Gui was weak, prompting Gui to reprimand him. However, he didn't want to worry about Gui because Sangmin's problem was already giving him headaches. Suddenly, a balloon came towards Sung Wan. He didn't have to dodge it. It was compressed, and the two guys behind him were astonished to see the ball explode before contacting him. The boy who admired Si Young was condemning Sung Wan for being a man who chased after two horses and said he couldn't let a man like him get close to Si Young while holding a picture of three pals. That boy was impatient to know where they would meet when, at that very moment, a monster appeared behind him. Sung Wan went to the rooftop but didn't see Si Young, and there was a gigantic eye watching him. The other man was controlling these creatures from the bathroom, and he ordered Sung Wan to be slain as the clones flew over. At the same time, Si Young appeared with her Gui Yi. That man, who was also on the rooftop at the moment, claimed that he quickly noticed that Si Young and Sung Wan were dating. However, Si Young charmed him and pretended to be single in this situation. Neither Si Young nor Sung Wan knew that guy. That guy, seeing how the two looked down on him, split into numerous versions to attack them. Si Young noticed the unexpected circumstance and asked Boxel if it was ready. It was her Gui Yi's name. Soon after, Boxel transformed from its normal form, frightening the other boy's clones. The other boy then commanded his clones to run forward and attack, while Si Young somersaulted around and summoned Jutsu, and a sword appeared in her palm. Sung Wen and his Gui Yi were outside watching and found this move quite interesting. The clones charged in to attack and were slashed by Si Young with a sword, making them vanish. She then charged up again to destroy them with her sword in turn, and the other boy saw that and said she was not Si Young, not at all cute. As soon as he finished, he rushed up to attack Si Young, but Si Young was faster and sliced him across the body. Sung Wan witnessed this and inquired if that boy was dead, but Si Young responded that he was still alive because her boxel didn't kill humanity. Si Young stated she thought she had found a normal person after signing a contract with Gui Yi, but Sung Wen appeared useless. Sung Wen stuttered, but then Si Young added that admitting his wish must be embarrassing. He must have been desperate and longed for something. Boxel also claimed that they were intrigued by those desires. She claimed that Gui Yi did not tie it to anyone and that anyone could have a wish. The Gui Yi contract could only be formed if the chosen ones were young men, not adults or children. If they were in that condition and had desires formed in their minds, which began as a small speck of fire and later turned into a fierce flame, the Gui Yi contract could be formed. However, when contracts were created, desires often became stronger. Once they lost their humanity and were wild, this scenario was called inhumane, and she and Boxel frequently went to eradicate such kinds. Sung Wen stated that was why he hadn't seen any Gui Yi recently, and Si Young and Boxel were like heroes of justice. Boxel heard this and replied Sung Wen didn't read the contract. In exchange for borrowing their power, Sung Wen had to rid himself of the other Gui Yi so that it could absorb their power as a food source. Growing their strength was Gui Yi's purpose passed down from generation to generation. The most delicious energies were known as the virtues or the seven deadly sins, and there were also Gui Yi who combined their wants and strengths because they wanted to become kings. Sung Wen heard it and turned to say that was the reason it instructed him to gather the seven virtues. When Boxel heard Chung Meng say this, it laughed while remembering how Chung Meng used to be like the four star statues but now seemed meaningless after being defeated by the Azure Dragon. Chung Meng heard Boxel say these words and instantly urged it to stop talking and hurried to strangle it, but Boxel said that Chung Meng was no longer powerful enough to do so. After Sangmin's mother arrived at his house, she noticed that he didn't answer the door and assumed that he was sleeping. However, the door suddenly opened, revealing Sangmin crying out to his mother, I'm hungry, with a half-monster's face. As soon as he opened the door, a stream of darkness flew out, and when his mother saw him, she rolled her eyes in panic. She was immediately swept into Sangmin's room by the dark energy, and then the door slammed shut, leaving only the mother's cry. Darkness darkened the sky. Sung Wen and Du He arrived at the hospital to discover Sang Min's mother already in a hospital bed. Sung Wen came over and asked her if she was okay. She now appeared to be a lost soul, her face covered in scars and her eyes black. 
Sung Wan recounted that when his parents passed away in an accident when he was still a child, everyone thought he was unfortunate and pitiful. His parents died in a car accident, leaving him alone. He stopped going to school and locked himself inside his home. At that point, Sang Min and Do Hee went to clean the house for him. Do Hee brushed the dust without opening the window, causing dust to fly around the house, and after much labor, the house was clean. The two then went to call Sung Wan at his door, but he didn't answer. Sang Min noticed this and told Do Hee to go home, explaining that Sung Wan likely needed more time to take over. The following morning, when Sung Wen awoke early, he heard sounds coming from the kitchen and went outside to see Sang Min and his mother cooking. As soon as Sang Min's mother saw Sung Wen, she greeted him and said she had heard that he hadn't eaten in a while. She then asked him to come sit at the table, where she had placed the hot dishes she had just finished cooking. Sung Wen began scooping a spoonful of soup, and as soon as he tasted it, he started crying. Sang Min's mother brought him more food and told him he needed to eat if he wanted to cry. Sung Wen was sitting next to the hospital bed, clutching his aunt's hand, but Sang Min's mother abruptly threw her hand forward to do something, so Sung Wen covered her with a blanket and ordered her to go back to sleep when he noticed the Gui at her bedside. Do He just went to call Sang Min's father, who was leaving for work but would be back soon. He advised them that they should go home because a nurse was there to take care of her, so they came over to say goodbye, said they'd be back tomorrow, and then they departed. On the way back, do he claimed again that she didn't know where Sangmin was, that he was gone, and that his mother had been injured. Sungwen abruptly asked Do he if she could walk home alone, then said he needed to stop by this spot, so he left first. Before Do he could respond, her buddy had already left. Sungwen hurried to Sangmin's house, but the police were still present. He made an attempt to enter secretly, but Gui abruptly interrupted, saying she had never seen Sungwen so determined and asking if he needed help. Sung Wan was perplexed when he heard this. Gui said that he should close his eyes as relaxedly as possible while breathing in and sensing the space around him. Sung Wen did as instructed and could hear all the sounds surrounding him, including some he didn't want to hear. Chung Meng instructed Sung Wen to try to circulate the power in his body while in that state. A stream of power passed through him, but Sung Wan felt as though nothing had changed. Once he opened his eyes, Sung Wen discovered that he was invisible. Chung Meng should have mentioned this power earlier. After that, he went into the house without saying anything further. Before that, Chung Meng advised him that the invisibility effect could expire, so be careful. The policemen outside the house discovered no clues and were unable to locate the kid. The police stated that she would know when she woke up and that since it seemed like a typical burglary, they shouldn't look into it. The two of them were talking while Sung Wen entered the house between them invisibly. Suddenly, they brought up ghost videos on YouTube, saying that people were talking about them and that the scene wasn't a joke. Hearing that, Sung Wen opened the gate to enter. The two officers instantly turned around and stared at the self-opening gate, telling each other to go inside to check. Sung Wen went up to Sang Min's room, and after he saw the door scratched, he went inside. Inside, there was a broken artwork lying on the ground. Chung Meng remarked that his aunt's scars in the hospital were identical to those here. Sung Wan, upon observing this, immediately inquired as to whether it had been done by Gui and whether Sang Min had already been devoured. Chung Meng said that no, Sang Min must have been assaulted by Gui in order to take advantage of his guilt, and if Sang Min was eaten, his mother would not be alive. After then, Sung Wan took up a photograph of three buddies and told himself that Sang Min was still alive and that he needed to find him right away. Two boys in another part of the city were watching a recent YouTube video of a ghost that was caught on camera. The video showed a girl filming a vlog when she suddenly noticed someone behind her. She had just turned around when she saw a strange object, a monster, eating the girl. The two boys had just completed viewing the video and thought it was very realistic. Sung Wen then called Si Young to see if she had seen the video. She was at the spot at the time and reported that there were still some traces. Sung Wan heard this and told her to hold on a moment, he would be there soon. Si Young noticed something and then summoned the sword to place it on the ground. As she did so, she felt one, two, five, and then seventeen guays, all of whom appeared to be moving in the direction of the school. Si Young was perplexed as to why there were so many guays collected together, she couldn't track and trace with her powers anymore, and she wasn't sure if Sung Wan possessed that capacity but then a voice from the sword prompted her to ask who was there. At this point, 
Si Young thought that she was distracted by the rustles earlier and said that it would be stronger if she ate a monster with hatred. The other monster howled that it had done nothing wrong, that it grabbed the food and chewed. It appeared that this monster had a grudge against Park Chanyang and was fervently seeking retribution against him. Si Young stood on the side and saw this scene, wondering what was going on when the monster raced up and stated it could be stronger if it ate her, and then it attacked her. Si Young quickly parried that blow, but it seemed to come at her faster than she anticipated. She then leapt forward and swung her sword at the monster, but because of its hard outer shell, she was unable to slash it down. The monster then used its tail to knock Si Young into the distance, but fortunately she braked in time to avoid harm. The monster was suffering from a desire to blur everything. It only wanted to get stronger to kill its foes so it would eat Si Young, but Si Young instantly picked up her sword and prepared to face the monster. Si Young unleashed her power and dashed towards the monster. If the monster's shell was tough, she would shatter it into a hundred pieces. She then sliced the monster repeatedly, causing it to scream. Unfortunately, when Si Young slashed one more time, it unluckily seized the blade and gripped her neck. Sung Wen quickly arrived to save Si Young from the creature just as it was ready to devour her. When she asked him if he could use his powers, he said that all he needed to do was punch the monster hard. As soon as Si Young heard it, she approached Sung Wen while wearing a melancholy expression. She had significantly weakened the monster as well, but Sung Wen hadn't used his powers because his physical abilities were so powerful. Si Young grabbed her sword and was ready to finish when the monster transformed into a human. He wasn't a student at their school, but he was wearing a Heon high school uniform, so she asked him if he knew anyone named Park Chanyang. The moment Si Young explained that she needed to first look into the other party, Sung Wan immediately offered to help. Si Young said she had given the matter some thought and inquired as to whether Sung Wan's friend had been eaten. However, Sung Wan immediately responded that it hadn't happened yet. Si Young patted Sung Wan on the shoulder and wished the two of them good cooperation before saying she would see him tomorrow. Si Young, on the other hand, was quite curious about Sung Wen's abilities. Sang Min was looked at everywhere he went on the crowded street. He appeared to be lifeless, and Gui claimed that if Sang Min had adhered to the terms of the contract, he wouldn't have turned out this way. Sang Min heard this and knelt, saying he would do everything to just leave his mother alone. Gui laughed and asked why, or would he then just stay at home and act like a sick guy? Gui then snapped its fingers and told Sang Min not to worry that it would send his mother to a safe place, and that if he followed the deal, nothing would happen. Gui placed his hand on Sangmin's shoulder and approached him, hoping for assistance. The two were conversing somewhere in the city when Sangmin showed up unexpectedly, but they quickly realized that they hadn't invited anyone. The other guy asked him incessantly who he was, but when he saw Sangmin's scary expression and Sangmin instructed him to inform them that Darkie had arrived, the other guy became too terrified to argue and was forced to only comply then. After stating it, the other guy opened the door to let Sang Min enter as they both waited outside. Sang Min entered and saw a board with Si Young and Sung Wen's names on it. He then spoke up to someone he hadn't seen in a while. The other guy claimed it took Sang Min a long time to find his host, but Sang Min waved his hand and said thanks to that, he could find the ideal host. But, appearing a little weak, Gui advised him to let it show because, despite the fact that he still resisted quite a bit, it seemed that he had obtained numerous sources of power in Gui's absence. The monster said that it recognized it couldn't handle everything on its own, therefore the pledge of an alliance until they became stronger was still valid, and Gui and Sangmin's body turned his head and declared they would work together until his strength recovered before walking out of the door. The Gui and Sangmin was Darkie, who would be their ally for a while. The man in the chair stated that even if they overcame Darkie and Wan, the loss they would suffer would be significant. After all, he had given this mission to this scary, muscular man. The following day at school, Du He chastised Sung Wan for leaving so abruptly the day before, saying she couldn't call Sang Min and the ant was hurt, and she also held out several posters of Sang Min and intended to hang them up. However, Sung Wan put his hand on Do He's shoulder and said he couldn't tell her anything right now but would surely find Sang Min. He knew she was annoyed but trusted him a little. Do He heard that and noted no one could stop Sung Wen anyway. Sung Wen then shook Do He's body and claimed he'd inform her later. Do He headed to the women's washroom to wash her hands when she heard a peculiar squeak and saw a classmate go out. She told that girl that her skin looked overly pale and asked if she was okay 
but the other girl didn't respond and simply walked away. The female that Do He saw in the restroom had a pale face. She went home and uploaded a picture of her abs on social media so everyone would see them. Suddenly, someone called and asked whether she had vomited food. That person also told her to practice because otherwise, her muscles would be lost. The girl stepped on the scale right away but did not notice a decrease in weight. She answered on the other end of the phone that she didn't want to be a pig like him or that she would rather die. The other guy said it appeared as though her brother would have to teach her how to train, but the girl told him to say whatever he wanted. On the other end of the telephone was the man with the furious, muscular face, who asked if she knew Si Young from her same school. The following day, Sung Win and Si Young were on their way somewhere, and Sung Win reminded Si Young that they were heading to Ho Yan school, not this school. Si Young instantly said that they came here to test his skills, a symphony of power. Sung Wan observed this and asked if she was kidding. Si Young said they had to collaborate for a while, at least she needed to see how good he was. She instructed him to do as she did and instantly went to attack Sung Wan. Si Young kept striking and Sung Wan merely evaded. Rapid hits, rapid victories, and steals were movements that let her boost her attack speed. Let's see whether Sung Wan could dodge any longer. Soon after, Si Young used it on Sung Wan. Sung Win saw that this technique was not the same as previously, but it was evident that he could still perceive the direction of the point of the knife extremely quickly. Si Young attacked Sung Win, but he escaped all of her moves, claiming that it was due to his good eyes. After hearing this, Si Young planned a new move to battle Sung Wan. The fight lasted for a while before coming to an end. As Sung Wan asked about the result, Si Young responded with the single word, pass. She then questioned him about how he made the decision regarding Gui's power. Sung Wan said that it was based on Gui's own skills. Si Young stated that was true, but how he used Gui's powers was also crucial. After signing the contract, he was allowed to use some of Gui's power. In fact, he was allowed to use 20% of Gui's power, which meant that he would have a superior body compared to ordinary people, and Sung Wan said that this meant he had never lost a game or a fight. As for Si Young, she used it on her weapon and was attempting to transfer the remaining 80% to her bat. It would be simpler for them to use the power if they used it on something they liked. Oddly, it seemed that Si Young's ability to use a baseball bat was similar to the way Sung Win used his abilities in his body. On the road, Sang Min was walking when he came across some people who recognized him. It was Si Owen, and he kept wondering if Sang Min was alive or dead, but Sang Min appeared to be healthy. Sangman was confused when he saw Seoen, but he soon remembered how Seoen had abused him in the past. Seoen had poured milk on Sangman's head and asked if he could get rid of the milk's odor, and the fat guy who was with Seoen had also bullied Sangman. They harassed Sangman, using every trick in the book to torment him. Sangman stated that was the story. Seoen spotted Sangman muttering something and cursed at him right away. Thus, the Gui and Sangman was aroused by his need for revenge, and it was all Seoen's fault. Si Young, who was on this side, was still aiming the weapon at Sung Win's face and remarked that it appeared that her baseball skills were comparable to his physical prowess. After all, who was he? Sung Win realized he couldn't hide it any longer and sat down to speak, claiming it had been happening for a long time. On Sang Min's side, the fat man rubbing Sang Min's head claimed that Sang Min hadn't eaten punch in a while and had forgotten the smell. Si Owen saw Sang Min glaring and ignored him, so he raised his hand to try to strike him. Following that, Sang Min was struck repeatedly. Suddenly, the fat man's hand seemed to have been broken by someone, causing him to collapse to the ground while still holding it. At that point, Sang Min's teammates with sticks rushed up to aim at him, but their stick was quickly grabbed by Gui's snout, leaving them puzzled as to what was going on. Sang Min then kicked Gyo Sang backwards. His comrade was swept beneath his feet, unable to move, and something was swept into his neck and lifted him up. Si Owen witnessed this and instantly fled away, but Sangman got in front of him and knocked him flying back, followed by another punch to Si Owen's face. Si Owen then begged Sangman to pardon him, stating that he would be Sangman's servant, so please spare him. Sangman inquired if Si Owen knew how to put on that face and then continued to strike Si Owen in the face despite his pleadings. After beating these individuals, Sangman understood how they felt. The next day at school, the muscular guy showed up. The sister who saw her brother approached him and demanded to know what he was doing at her school, telling him to leave and go to practice. 
However, the muscular guy said that it was the school's founding day and that he wanted to draw the attention of everyone in the school. They were disputing back and forth when he noticed Doohee come into the school from afar, and at that point he seemed to stand in awe of how lovely she could be. Suddenly, a boy ran fast because he was late for school, so he dropped all the papers in Doohee's hand. Dohee was about to take them up when she noticed a big guy collecting them for her as well. Dohee looked at him and realized he wasn't a student at her school, and his sister watching from a distance could only deny knowing her brother. He picked up some papers and gave them to Dohee, and upon seeing Sangmin's face on the poster, he assumed that this person had some connection to Dohee, which made him hate Sangmin even more. He then spoke in the same tone in which he had met Sangmin though it was a little difficult to say, so he asked her to take her there after school. Doohee thought that was fine, so she agreed, gave him her phone number, and entered the classroom. Sungwin was considering his own abilities in class when Doohee entered to inform him that Sangmin had been seen. She arranged to meet that person after school and vowed to teach the fool Sangmin a lesson after catching him. That guy also promised to take Doohee to the location where he had seen Sangmin the day before. Sung Wan had a bad feeling that was undoubtedly related to Gui, so he told her to call him when she came to find Sangmin because he wanted to go along. Do He said suddenly that Sung Wan always went somewhere alone, but Sung Wan said that he would definitely go with her today. He even yelled at her to remember to call him, and he thought he should also tell Si Young about this. On the rooftop, a girl was searching for Si Young while a Gui was standing behind her. Si Young noticed this, took her sword, and prepared to engage in combat when the girl emerged from behind her and claimed she hadn't come here to fight. Sung A.H. stated there was another signatory besides her and urged Si Young to invite that guy to the empty courtyard behind the building for lunch. Si Young responded, wondering why she had to do this, and Sung A.H. said she didn't come here to fight but to have a talk. In another location, some men were being fought by Sang Min. Even though they begged, he ignored them and continued fighting. However, Darkie advised Sang Min to stop here. He was only fighting normal people, and he was now physically much stronger than them. They seemed to be ready, so let's go find the seven deadly sins. As promised, Si Young and Sung Wan arrived at Seeing Ga's rendezvous point. The muscular guy saw that the two looked fragile and weak and asked Sung A.H. if he was the right person. Si Young immediately raised the sword towards him asking why he wanted to meet them. Seeing that, he immediately covered his body with his hands, showing an embarrassed expression that made the other three people not know what to say next. He told them to join his guild, if they didn't, they were ordered to get rid of them. A Gui soon appeared behind him, sending dust to the sky, Chung Meng recognized it as Dokabi. Sung Wan finds this pressure no joke, but if the two work together then, he didn't finish his sentence when he saw Si Young's eyes on Sung A.H., she's also a contractor. Suddenly he said that he had used too much power, they didn't come here to fight, everything was easier to discuss after he showed his ability. Sung Wan told him to tell about his guild first, but he seems to have forgotten his lines. Sung A.H. immediately mentioned it was Gui's, by Gui's and for Gui's, he said that if the two of them were also signatories, they would surely know that Gui appeared because of human wishes. But weak Gwei's that can't satisfy their host's wishes will be killed or absorbed by another Gwei. They are here to help those Gwei fulfill their wish, and to repay the favor those Gwei will help other Gwei. He said it was a nice guild to make such contracts, then said he'd give the two of you two days and then come back. Before I left, I reminded the two of you that I don't get tired of fighting, and his name is Park Chanyang. It seemed he was the one they were looking for from the monster incident before. They probably wouldn't have to go looking for him anymore, Si Young asked him what he wanted to do. Sung Wan said that in these two days they must practice a lot. Hearing that, Si Young giggled, seeing that, he asked her if she wanted to join that suspicious group. She wanted to find Park Chan Young to find out why Gui was gathering at the school, but there was no way she could lose that group. Sung Wan said that after beating them up, it's okay to ask but with a hot temper, Si Young suddenly said that the name is really strong right now. After school, Du He was waiting for Sung Wan but didn't see him, suddenly Chan Yang came in front of her and said she seemed ready. When Du He heard that, he told him to wait a while, and one of her friends wanted to go with her. Chan Yang immediately went to her and pulled her shoulder to say that she was a bit busy, so she just went and contacted her friend. This crooked looking guy was asking him to wear glasses to transfer money to him, suddenly he wore glasses and said that the previous debt has not been paid. 
Hearing that, the other guy said he had already paid. That's why he told the glasses guy to stop using the notebook and use technology. Wearing glasses saw that, he smiled and said that he had remembered. At that time the other guy asked him to transfer money to his account. The other guy walked out into the street and laughed and said that he was really stupid with glasses, and he got more money. Suddenly, he saw Du He and Chan Yang walking away and thought they might be involved in that incident. Chan Yang led her to a building and pointed at it. The two of them going inside were dumbbells and bicycles. Du He saw the surroundings and asked him if he must be here. Suddenly, Chan Yang closed the door and smiled sinisterly. It seemed that she had fallen into his trap. Sung Wan, because he finished his last period late, he quickly went to look for Du He but ran out, but she was nowhere to be found. He immediately took out his phone to call her, but the subscriber could not contact her, or she left first, he had a bad premonition. Suddenly Jaehyuk asked Sung Wan what are you doing standing there, he asked if he saw Du He. Jaehyuk said that I saw her with a man just now, he even told him that he should treat Du He better. Sung Wan immediately grabbed his wrist and asked where she was and where they went, Jaehyuk pointed to the building at the intersection over there. Sung Wan immediately ran to find her, he also chased after him. The two chased to the place to open the door and saw Chan Yang making Du He do squats. Sung Wan sighed in relief thinking what happened to her. Chan Yang saw him coming and said there were still two days left, but there's not much to think about. Sung Wan's hands have been curled into fists ever since. He rushed to punch Chan Yang in the face and said the obvious offer he would refuse. He just wanted to live a normal student life. But from Sang Min now to Du He and he wanted him to join, he said he would give him a match. Chan Yang saw this and immediately summoned Gui and told him to tear his body apart. He even asked him if he could bet if he won, he had to join and if he won, he would grant them a wish. Sung Wan asked him if he was sure he could grant his wish, and after the two of them closed the bet, they entered the match. Du He sitting outside saw the two monsters and didn't understand what was going on, she seemed to have seen them before. It was that day, the day Sang Min was bullied by the CON and Sung Wan came to save them. Then she also saw the hidden weapons from Sang Min, and then she didn't know what happened. Two people fighting, two people watching outside also felt worried for them when they saw Sung Wan being beaten and spitting blood. Chan Yang raised his fist and told him where his previous spirit was gone. He jumped up again and aimed straight at him and attacked like that, but what he didn't expect was that Sung Wan could counterattack to separate the two. You find him too strong, it turns out that those stupid muscles aren't just for show. Chung Mang saw that he seemed to be very angry, so he told him to avoid it if possible, in this situation it is difficult to win. He thought so too, but didn't think he could run away right now. After seeming to have recovered, Chan Yang continued to tell him to continue and immediately rushed over. Sung Wan covered him while he attacked from the front and sent him flying. Then he jumped on the pedal again causing him to spit blood out and hit the ground. Chan Yang seemed to be very angry, bursting with fighting power that made his pants also tore open to reveal a toned thigh full of tendons. Right after that, he jumped on Sung Wan's body making him scream. Du He and Jae Hyuk saw that and were shocked and worried about their friend. Chan Yang immediately walked over and asked Du He to practice one more set. Suddenly Jae Hyuk spoke up as if it wasn't over yet. When he heard that, he said he had defeated him, but when he turned around, he saw that Sung Wan had stripped off his outer layer, a huge amount of energy emanating from his body made him blind. He had turned into a mountain Dokabi with the characteristic ability to possess, and Chan Yang was shocked to see how he could use possessive skills like a boss. Sung Wan also knows that this is possession and it doesn't seem to last long so he will deal with him quickly as a thank you for helping him reach this level. When Chan Yang heard that, he cursed him for being an arrogant dog, then he immediately rushed to attack Sung Wan first. He easily dodged his punches. He grabbed it with his hand, causing it to hurt making him cry out, but soon the broken arm was restored. Now he's really strong but Sung Wan doesn't think he'll lose to him. Chan Yang then told him to get over his muscles and then bark again. This time he was the first to attack and he was defensive. But suddenly he hit his arm and hurt Chang Yang's arm, causing Chang Yang to scream. This is exactly as he planned, but he said that your situation seems to be more nameless. Sung Wan said he sacrificed himself to deal critical damage, but what he sacrificed was restored. Immediately the hand that was lost earlier returned to normal. Jae Hyuk saw this scene and thought that people would normally try not to get hurt. 
He completely gave up on defense to focus on attack. It's the fighting style of guises that have the ability to heal. Chan Yang then asked him where he learned that stupid fighting skill. Sung Wan sincerely said that he learned from a promising manga. He then immediately jumped to him and attacked, but Chan Yang soon caught up with him. That didn't stop Sung Wan, he immediately kicked him away. He said he couldn't lose to someone like you, then told him to fight one more time and take some pill. After taking the potion he was like a madman, summoning steroids to fight. He also didn't expect him to use steroids to fight, he hit the ground and prepared to crush him. This time, both sides rushed to attack causing a great tremor in this building, a tremendous power spread around here. After the dust of the battle, Sung Wan also returned to his original form, and Chan Yang was beaten against the wall by him. When he saw that Du He seemed to be fine, he was so happy that he quickly waved to her to say he was fine. Suddenly, from nowhere, Chan Yang rushed through Sung Wan's face and jumped to Du He about to hit her. Jae Hyuk suddenly counted something and then a card appeared in his hand. He swiped an attack on Chan Yang, it turned out that he was also a contractor. Sung Wan immediately told Du He to come over. Jake Hyuk said that I'm not your enemy now, but it's about time the supervisor came here. Sung Wan quickly asked if Du He was okay, hearing from the supervisor if Jae Hyuk also knew about Si Young. Outside the building Si Young came here with a baseball bat, she couldn't feel any energy, so she should check it out. But behind her is Sung A.H. who has been following her ever since, she said she wanted to come here to see an interesting play. Si Young then walked inside, meeting their eyes as Chan Yang was beaten up sitting against the wall breathing, this side were three friends resting. Sung A.H. saw the muscle being defeated and was extremely shocked. She immediately became angry because he won. Sung Wan also said she wanted to punch each other. But seeing that they had three powerful people here, so I still gave up. Sung A.H. went over and told me to bring him back. Sung Wan said yes but they have to do some work first. They bet now it's time to do it. He asked him where Sang Min was, and Jae Hyuk continued saying he knew what would happen to Dokabi if he didn't keep his promise. Chan Yang said Sangmin meant Io Duxini, he's already allied with their guild. He suddenly appeared in the guild, saying that he wanted to stay until he regained his strength. And now it's gone out to strengthen so Chan Yang doesn't know the exact location of Sangmin. Sung Wan heard these words and punched him saying that was not the promise he made earlier. Suddenly Sung A.H. said he wasn't lying, that's all they really know. He also backed away from punching the other guy. Si Young said if he finished talking, clean up and go home, she pulled out her sword and handed it to Chan Yang. Immediately a slash hit him, it caused him to lose all muscle and only left with a thin skeleton sitting crouched after that initial transformation, Si Young now knew what his wish was. Sung Wan turned to Sung A.H. and told her to go and tell her guild that he turned down the offer to join the guild. After finishing, Sung A.H. also helped Chan Yang go home. She said that it's so tragic that it reminds me of the old days. It's the complete opposite of the past, she even said that he looks handsome when he's thin. Everything's already gone, let's go play, although Chan Yang still regrets that muscle, but he has to accept it. On this side, Si Young asked Sung Wan if he didn't go to practice, why all of a sudden this happened. He asked her how did she know she was here, Si Young said they were so busy, why didn't she know, he explained. Jae Hyuk saw the tension in the atmosphere and said that everyone must be tired, went somewhere else to talk, he even took out his card and said he would cover everyone. They went to a cafe, and Do He looked a bit shocked so Sung Wan took her home first. Si Young saw that and said it was annoying, he said she didn't mind. She doesn't say anything for fear of affecting him and she tries to figure things out on her own. When Si Young heard that, he sighed and said why bother with ordinary people. At this time, Jae Hyuk also brought them coffee, he also said that he can drink as much as he wants, he can drink it. Jae Hyuk said by the way, he knew there were many other signers besides himself, but he was surprised that Sung Wan was one of them. Facing Jae Hyuk's words were the doubtful eyes of the other two, he said that they looked like two lovers sulking at each other. Si Young then asked him who he was, and Jae Hyuk just said he's not your enemy in general. Seeing Si Young doubting him, Jae Hyuk immediately said his goal was very clear, the association his friend allied with he wanted to destroy. Once again the whole table fell into silence, he spoke up and said that the two of you didn't want to ask anything. Sung Wan said as long as he wasn't an enemy, Jae Hyuk felt sorry for him, Si Young asked him to tell about the group. 
Park Chanyang said they help the weaker Gui, help them grow so they can help the other Gui, as Si Young remembers he said. Jae Hyuk laughed after hearing that, then said that they don't have to help for free, it has a price. Gui who receive help to increase their strength must give some of their energy to their superior Gui, and those Gui will also give it to their superior. Sung Wan sees it as a multi-level pyramid. Jae Hyuk says that's why the people above are stronger, Chan Young is one of them. Si Young asked him how many superiors he has, except for Chan Young, there are three. Out of the three, the leader of Chan Yang's strength cannot be compared with him. They were surprised because he was so strong. Jae Hyuk said that's why I came here and told them to ally with me. After returning, Sung Wan called Du He but couldn't get through, so he ran to the place she used to go, which was a hill from which he could look down on the city. Indeed Du He was sitting here, he gently walked over to her when he heard her say he knew and asked if it was called Dokabi in the mountains. Sung Wan heard that and asked her how she knew. Du He turned around with sparkling eyes with the rabbit beside her. When they were kids, every time they quarreled, Du He would always come here, Sung Wan and Sang Min would look for her. Du He said that when looking down like this, it feels like she understands everything. Now the same, Sung Wan came here to find her again and found her here, he sat down next to her. Du He said she thought a lot when she was alone at home but now that she knows why her aunt was injured and Sang Min's disappearance, she went to distribute leaflets without knowing anything. Now she knew he did everything alone because he didn't want her to worry, but she didn't want to be the only one who didn't know what happened to them. Sung Wan immediately said sorry, now Du He understands why Si Young laughed like that at that time. While she was thinking while breathing in the fresh air here, this little bunny suddenly appeared. Sung Wan said that there are also some cute Gui, he was about to touch it but it hid behind her. Du He spoke up again saying that she didn't want to wait alone anymore. Let's go find Sang Min. Sung Wan also agreed with her to go find their friend. At the base of the other group, Sung A.H. returned to report to the leader about everything. He said it won over Chan Yang, did he underestimate Sung Wan? Sung A.H. then said that although there were some unexpected developments, but give her one more chance, if she did, she would definitely. Without waiting for her to finish her sentence, he stood up and told him to do it himself, then he asked Jin Wu how this month's profit was. He told them they had a big customer and took out the spreadsheet to calculate the customer's loan amount, only to realize that Jin Wu was missing so much money after counting. The captain scolded him for being short of money while they were lending money. The red-haired girl sitting next to him laughed and said she told him to leave this accounting case to himself. When the leader heard that, he said that if she let her go, she would probably gamble everything. Then he asked if Ho Young had bad debt, anyway he went out to deal with it. The next day at school, Sung Wan took Du He to introduce to the two that this was their new teammate. In contrast to Jae Hyuk clapping his hands to welcome her enthusiastically, Si Young was not very happy and asked what her ability was. Si Young said there's no use in being a contractor but she can't even feel the energy, at least Du He isn't the weight of the group. Du He tells Si Young to be right, after Gui signed her contract, she is not as strong and not as popular as Si Young's Jiangsan Tiger. Hearing that, Si Young asked how she knew, Du He said only one thing she wanted in her contract. She simply doesn't want anyone to go missing, her ability is detection. She can know the location of the other Gui and their abilities. But when fighting, she is weak as Si Young said, so please take care of that part, otherwise she will take care of searching for Gui. Sung Wan then grabbed her hand and asked if she knew where Sang Min was. She said she didn't know what his energy was like, so she wasn't sure which one was his. Sung Wan told her to give it a try. Now that she was the only hope, then she started using her powers. She searched for a distance of 5 kilometers, there were about 3 remarkable reactions. All three were white so she thought these guays were not dangerous. Suddenly Dohee's face changed and an orange one appeared at school in the library. In the library, there was a man calling the other group with Jin Woo answering the phone to borrow money to play sports. But Jin Woo said the amount he borrowed was over the limit. The boss personally went to collect the debt one by one, prepare 8 million won. Jin Woo also warned him not to think about running away. The boss would definitely chase him to the core of the earth, after saying that he hung up. Then he turned to borrow money from his friend next to him and promised that he would definitely win this time. But the other guy was too clear about how many times he lost everything, and told him to invest as he did or not. After hearing Du He say there was a Gui child in the library, they immediately ran here, 
opened the door, and saw that the other friend had been beaten and bruised. He beat the other guy to get money to continue playing, but unexpectedly went bankrupt, making him mad. Right after that he changed into his real Gui form and asked if they had any money. Suddenly Du He feels that something is not right, something is approaching here at a very fast speed, it is coming. Right after that, the leader of the other group appeared to attack the Gui. He came to collect the debt and asked why the debtor didn't pick up the phone turned out to be transformed. He saw that the four of them were all here, so he saved his time looking for them. Sung Wan didn't know what was going on, he hadn't shown Gui yet but he couldn't move. He told them not to be too scared, he just came to see who could defeat Park Chanyang, thanks to them he lost an assistant. He only needed to use one fist to defeat the Gui quickly back to its original form, then called for someone to clean up the mess. He walked in front of Sung Wan and looked at him for a while and then said he'd take care of him if he didn't like him but he wanted Sung Wan. Then he stepped back and told him not to be afraid, maybe they could become allies. Sung Wan was about to get angry when Du He stopped him saying he's stronger than him, no he might be stronger than all of them put together, he's strong. Du Oxini saw that she was the scout type and approached her and said that it was quite difficult to destroy them. His hand was about to touch Du He when he reached out to block it but Si Young's blade was faster and went to attack him. But he got hold of the sword and said he was done talking, instead of fighting, let's talk. Jae Hyuk immediately went to stop Si Young and told him to listen, he was so shocked that he didn't remember him so much that his hand was already curled into a tight fist. Jae Hyuk told him to stop talking nonsense and get to the point. He asked if they were looking for Eo Duxini, he wanted to bet. If they win, he will take them to the person they are looking for, and if they lose, they must become his subordinates. Sung Wan said what if they refused, he said if he could do it, just give it a try. This is just a notice, not giving them a choice, suddenly Du He sat on the floor, she seemed shocked by something. He waved to them and said that he would see them again in a week, he would let them know the location later and then turned away from here. When he left, Sung Wan breathed out what the hell was this energy. Do he asked if you guys had to fight people like me all this time. Jae Hyuk says he's the one you mentioned, Sung Wan says he's no joke, do they have a chance to beat him? Jae Hyuk then said there is a way, if you guys help him, there will be a way. Si Young turned his head to say he went first, Sung Wan asked her to go with her, then she told him to take care of the other girl first. Over here, Do he was shivering, Sung Wan suddenly asked why they like betting so much. Jae Hyuk said it's the Dokabi style, they like games like betting and games. Si Young and her Gui talked while walking, he said it was dangerous this time, next time they have to be wiser. Suddenly, a cat came and rubbed Si Young's leg, she told him to wait for a while and then went to buy canned food for this cat. When he turned around, he was nowhere to be found, suddenly saw the cat lying on the ground with a woman who was abandoning it. Si Young then told the red-haired girl to stop and told her to apologize to the cat immediately. She recognized Si Young as Bainam's supervisor, and the captain told her not to disturb them for a week. When he learned that she was a member of the other party, Si Young took out his sword and prepared to fight her. The red-haired girl had been told but thought it would be fine as long as she kept talking, then asked Si Young if she wanted to play a game. These gamblers are all the same, she remembered Jae Hyuk talking about them earlier. If they take advantage of their interest in things like games or bets, they may benefit before they even start. The red-haired girl threw up the bag and said her favorite game, choose it at random. From the bag appeared a piece of paper, Bisekokshi Ji is a traditional Korean game, players will throw or kick so that the opponent's bricks are thrown away. Si Young was still confused about the game when the stones appeared and rushed towards her. The redhead said that the reward is something that the opponent has. Si Young then said she didn't say she would join, she just did as she wanted, but just do as she wants, she'll end it right away. Si Young immediately jumped up with the sword to attack the red-haired girl, but she used flash to disappear immediately. Then reappearing on the other side with the stones and floating in the air, the redhead controlled the hail to attack Si Young causing a dusty battle to occur. The Gui reminds her that she looks like a fool but is actually very strong so be careful. Then the stones are once again rushing towards Si Young. She told her she was stronger than she thought and then rushed to attack her. The red haired girl used her shield to stop Si Young from attacking her and then controlled to shoot rocks at her. Just when she was coughing unnoticed, she was hit in the face by a few rocks, causing Si Young to be thrown into the distance. 
The redhead made a big block of small stones and said it's over. Si Young couldn't avoid this moment. At that moment the red-haired girl controlled the flying rock to attack her. Si Young couldn't wait to die, but immediately stood up and picked up his sword. When the pile of rocks flew towards her, she slashed with all her strength but failed to do anything, causing Si Young to be smashed into the wall behind. Then the redhead approached her saying that it was a bit too much, but as long as she wasn't dead, she held out her hand and said take your reward. She was thinking about what to get when she suddenly gasped and asked who the hell Si Young signed with. During a sports match, Si Young and her father went to cheer for them, and she asked him if he thought he could run so well. He quickly said of course I can do it, suddenly turning around to see Si Young falling down. She was then taken to the hospital, when she woke up, Si Young couldn't find her father anywhere, so she went to look for him. As soon as I opened the door, I heard two people say that the child is so pitiful, now she has an incurable disease, it is said that she cannot live this year. Si Young heard this and knew she was going to die and was shocked. After his father went back to the hospital room to visit his daughter, he asked her if she wanted anything, Si Young looked out the window and said she wanted to see the sea. Right after that, she was allowed to go out to watch the sea, where Si Young heard the sound of cats meowing in the cave and went to the source of the noise. In the cave there are some very cute ones, they call out cats but are more like rabbits. Suddenly she heard her father calling, Si Young told her to go get some food and told them to wait here for her. Then she ran to where her father was calling her. At night when her father fell asleep, Si Young took out the food she had prepared, a bit afraid of the night, so she brought a baseball bat. Si Young went to the beach to look for the cats when suddenly they heard their cries, in the cave they were all beaten up by the monster. Si Young saw these children die and shed tears. Why did this happen to her, she wanted to live. The monster jumped out in front of her, it also saw that she didn't have much longer to live, that's why he let her see them. And this monster doesn't care if it eats the ones in the cave, it can evolve to the Amugi level, so tell her to get out. Right after that, it rushed to attack, causing Si Young's baseball bat to be broken in half, and she was thrown backwards. Suddenly another Gui appeared to attack this monster making it unable to counterattack but was destroyed on the spot. Then the other Gui held some of the animals in the cave in his arms. Si Young asked if they were your children, suddenly she felt so sleepy. Si Young opened her eyes again she was lying on the bed in the hospital room, so it was all a dream, but the wound on her arm was still there. Suddenly that Gui reappeared in this room, Si Young got off the bed and walked over to it and asked what's wrong with its pupils. Seeing that it didn't answer for a while, Si Young walked over to hug her. Gui thanked her for protecting them, patted her head and said he will protect her from now on. Si Young heard that and said thank you but she was about to die. Gui said there was still a way and said she would make a wish to him. The redhead said Si Young and Gui share the same lifespan. The first time she saw it, she suddenly said she had a good idea. She reached out her hand to her and said collect. She will take all of her life, leaving only a week, then say hello to her again and walk away. Si Young immediately fell to the ground, unable to do so her boxel. When she opened her eyes Si Young was already at Dohi's house. Si Young sat up and asked how she could find her. Do he sense that some Gui were fighting recently, so she and Sung Wan went out to check and saw Si Young lying on the ground. Si Young stood up and said there's no need to thank me and told me to go. Do he sighed and said that Jungsun Tiger's lifespan was only a week, what happened? Si Young saw these things that she knew too, and told her to keep it a secret from the others from now on. Do he was wondering why this happened when Si Young's two words please made her soft. The next day when we met again, Sung Wan asked Miss Si Young if she was okay. Do he said that apart from being injured, he was fine. He said again but if Si Young lost, why didn't that person take away his guay? Jay Hyuk said while eating that it must be because of that boss, he said he won't see him in a week. That's why even if they fight, they won't do anything to him. Hearing that, Do he immediately wondered why Jongsun Tiger's lifespan was gone, she turned to ask what would happen if someone lost their guay. Jay Hyuk said it was quicker to show her than to explain. Then they went to the building where there was a commotion before, but now it's clean. Jay Hyuk said he didn't know the reason but no matter how badly damaged the signers fought, it would return to its original state after a while. Sung Wan quickly said that someone was secretly fixing it. Jay Hyuk continued that everything that happened here didn't really happen. For example when signing with Gui, 
People will be engulfed by desires and hatred and then if they get into a fight with another Gui and get their Gui taken away, they won't remember the time they signed with Gui. They will only feel that those wishes have never been fulfilled and then suddenly disappear. Usually they will return to their normal life back then, in case they can't bear the emptiness because those desires are so intense, they may go insane or commit suicide. The two wondered how he knew so much, Jaehyuk said it must be because he has experience. He tells them not to worry too much, it is said that when he becomes the king of Gui, he can turn everything back to normal. Sung Wan thinks he's telling the truth, Chung Meng said maybe it's true, the king of Gui has the right to decide everything for all of Gui. Then Sung Wan and Du He returned together, it's been a long time since the two of them went together like that. Suddenly Du He said just now Jae Hyuk said that if Gui disappears, they forget everything related to Gui, so if Dokabi Mountain disappears too, what will happen to him? Sung Wan doesn't know either, it's just like that. Elsewhere, now Si Young is trying to continuously practice making her gasp. Boxel sees this and tells her not to be too forceful, he apologizes for not being able to protect her. But Si Young said it's not over yet she will protect Boxel again. Suddenly Jung Sin Tiger appeared to say thank you for everything. Si Young waved his hand to tell him not to say goodbye like that, but when he turned around, Gui was nowhere to be found. It appeared faintly again saying that he was too weak, then disappeared again. Si Young could only shout to Boxel but got no response. Suddenly a masked guy appeared, he came to offer condolences to her. That's why he invited her to come here in a completely different space. Si Young saw this guy kidnap her, rather, he bent down to say to make sure she was safe. Si Young asked him who the hell he was, but he told him to put the question aside and asked if she wanted to get stronger. Then came up with something called emotion that said if she absorbed this she would definitely win. Si Young then asked him who he was and why he gave it to me. He just said they were on the same side but because that Suioxini was giving them a headache, he helped her. Si Young heard that and asked him if he thought she would believe it. The masked man didn't force her to tell her whether she wanted to believe it or not, but if she didn't have the strength, she couldn't protect Jung Sin Tiger. The words that hit Si Young's heart made her hesitate to accept what he gave her. Suddenly she opened her eyes and saw that Boxel was in front of her, calling her to wake up, she suddenly fainted, surprising it. Si Young said she must be exhausted and said she was fine, holding what the guy gave her in her hand. Over here, Jae Hyuk is calling his mother saying he needs money urgently, needs cash, needs three months of pocket money. His mother also said that he will transfer money right away without asking. Mom at home thinks he doesn't have enough pocket money, so she has to give her son some extra money. After withdrawing the money, he threw the deposit to the Gui next to him. The amount of money in this Gui received very large. He has already prepared his weapons, I wonder how the children are prepared. At the same time in another place Sung Wan and Du He are fighting a Gui, she is searching for its weak point inside the middle finger. Seizing this point, Sung Wan quickly rushed to attack its weak point, causing it to be destroyed. But this is not good, he needs to be stronger, the countdown to the duel with Duoxini is not far away. In another spacious place, Sang Min is also fighting a guy. He said Eoduxini the arrogant prince wants to be king. He said of course he wanted to, thinking it was the perfect fit for the position. The other guy saw this and told him that he was still arrogant and didn't know the rules, and the Gui immediately pierced his body. Eoduxini says it's not natural that he's called the arrogant prince, he thinks the other guy's Gui is that stingy prince. The other guy insisted that Eoduxini wouldn't become a king, such a servant dared to make such a statement making him angry and killing him instantly, a small ball with the sin of miserliness flew into Sangmin's hand. He asked if this is what it wants to collect, Eoduxini said it was right but what he needed was the key particle, he asked if he didn't want to see that person again soon. Sangmin heard that and knew he was referring to someone who said the hypocritical Sung Wan name, the two of them will meet soon. Finally, the date of the battle date came, the three were present and Si Young also came. She wore a mask and held a baseball bat in her hand. Do he looked at Si Young and suddenly noticed the change in his lifespan. Jae Hyuk said everyone was full. Let's go, crush them. They stepped inside the dark door. The leader asked if they didn't run away. Wise decision. Behind him were the redhead, Jin Woo and Sung A.H. He said don't complicate things. They will fight four against four. Each side will send one person to fight. The winner of that battle will continue to fight the next person, the side standing will win. 
Jaehyuk said okay. The leader said as before, if they lose, they will join his guild. Jaehyuk said next, if we win he will take them to Eoduxini and his guild will be disbanded right. After compromising, he said to start stringing, but Jaehyuk said take it easy and said isn't this his home ground and he also checked their abilities. Isn't that a bit unbalanced? You guys have to let you guys know the sequence as well. When the leader heard that, he suddenly didn't know what to say, so Jaehyuk said that he won because he cheated. The great Dokabi likes to cheat, it's impossible to win in a fair fight. These words had a strong derision that made the leader very angry. He said their chains were Haran, Jinwoo, Sung A.H. and finally him, then told him not to tell him he cheated. Then Haran the redhead was the one to start, so it's fine to step forward and say that the captain crushes them all. Jae Hyuk was about to talk to them when Si Young nominated herself first, she had to take something back from her. Sung Wan felt it had something to do with his last fight. Suddenly Jae Hyuk told him to fight Duoxini and told him to just exhaust him as much as possible. Sung Wan said he'll do his best because Do He can't fight much so he'll be at the end, first Si Young then Jae Hyuk last. Do He felt that she was useless in these situations. Sung Wan immediately turned to her and told her to do as she did when she helped him, support them. Haran was waiting to see who was the first to go to battle, so hurry up. Seeing Si Young walking up to her, she said she didn't have much time left. Si Young took off her mask saying that's why she came here to get it back. Haran tells her to win and then moves on, then throws out the magic bag of the game she likes to pick at random. This time in the pocket appeared the Jaewibulnori game which is a Korean game in which players rotate cans containing burning objects to create rings of fire. Haran finds this game very delicious, she will burn her to ashes. Immediately the game tools appeared, a circle of fire was floating in the air with Haran's sinister smile. Si Young said her ability is also strong. Do he in the back reminds Si Young to hurry in close combat because that thing has a long range. The damage and range is great but it takes a lot of centrifugal force to maintain it, she can't move much. Si Young heard melee fighting and found it easy to say but act differently. Haran heard Dohi's words and told the long-haired girl to be right but wait a minute, she immediately appeared around her with sparks and asked Si Young to try getting closer. She quickly took up her weapon and moved forward, Haran attacked her accordingly. Si Young is trying to get as close as possible only then there is a chance of winning. Seeing Si Young rushing forward, Haran was very angry, when she went to cut the circle of fire around her, she was blown off. Si Young's leg got caught in the circle again, she did somersaults using it as a momentum to enter the circle. Just when Si Young was about to use the claw attack, Haran turned the circle rope into a bundle, a huge burning flame appeared and attacked, causing Si Young to fall. The moment she realized she wasn't strong enough, she immediately shoved what the masked man had given her into her mouth and fell to the ground. Immediately a bunch of monsters appeared. The leader saw this feeling and remembered his enemy bastard. Is he hiding there? Sung HWNA didn't even know what was going on seeing that. They all looked at her. Suddenly Si Young stood up she changed into another person. Told Haran to fight again this time she will send her back to the dust. Boxel found her strength surprising. But Si Young said she had no other choice. She didn't want Boxel to disappear like this, but we'll talk about this later. Haran still confidently said that she still couldn't get close to her, it was no different from before, this time she would definitely defeat her. Haran then raised the game paper in her hand and immediately the aurora ring of fire and dust appeared above her head. Si Young called Boxel then got on its back and attacked, Do he saw Si Young's strength stat increase. She would try to get as close as she could because she couldn't dodge that anyway so just ignore the fire dust and dodge the next spin. Haran saw that Si Young wanted to break through the ring of fire and held the rope. A huge explosion followed, making it impossible for anyone to see the inside of the battle. Haran landed on the ground while breathing while saying a whore was about to die but dared. Dachi didn't finish her sentence when she saw Si Young in front of her still rushing to attack. She wasn't paying attention at the time and immediately attacked with a home run that sent Haran flying up and hitting the ceiling. Si Young had to regain Boxel's strength but now her body has no strength left. Suddenly Do He stepped forward to help her up, then told Haran to give back the life expectancy of Jungsun Tiger she promised. The leader heard that and asked her to bet without telling him and told Haran to return it immediately. She then gave it back to her, Do He held it in front of Si Young and said she did a good job. Then it was Sungwin's turn, 
Jinwoo immediately teleported and said this is the one who can beat Chanyang. Sung Wan looked at him and said he seemed weaker than that muscular guy. Jinwoo said he was on another level. He created a pipe and immediately attacked him. Jinwoo used the abacus to slide and said he would lose so much that he couldn't even lift his hand. Consecutive attacks hit Sungwen but he remained there. Seeing that he was still standing, Jinwoo picked up the spreadsheet to attack him, but immediately Chung Mang punched him, causing Jinwoo to fly and hit the ceiling without falling, ending the match with a single blow. Sung A.H. was about to step up when Duoxini raised his hand to stop him saying he was going there. Jaehyuk saw that and said he didn't say that earlier, he took off his shirt and said in return he would allow both of them to hit him. Jaehyuk said there was no other way, and told him not to take his word for it. Before he could finish his sentence, he was punched in the face even though he was far away, the leader reminded them not to let their guard down. Right after that, Sung Wan ran to attack him, but what hurt was his hand, his body was so hard as if he was punching a solid wall. Suddenly Chung Mang said he could control its weight, Sung Wan heard that and said he should have said it sooner. Just when he was distracted, he was attacked by him with a 100 kilograms punch, Sung Wan flew up to leave defense and focus entirely on counterattacking him. That caused his finger to break, but it was quickly restored. He was hit with a punch and laughed and talked, it seems that the glory days of Dokabi Mountain are not just rumors. Suddenly Sung Wan hears Jay Hyuk, he has telepathy, he needs you to exhaust Duoxini as much as possible while he doesn't notice him. When Jay Hyuk sees an opening, he will immediately fly in, counting on you Sung Wan. He also agreed to this, but it seemed like one of Han's hands had changed. Chung Meng said it was a partial buff so that the arm could use its power more effectively. He told him to stand there dumbfounded, right after that, Sung Wan rushed to attack him continuously, legs and arms and the two hugged each other. He grabbed Sung Wan's face with his newly buffed arm and smashed him to the ground, the wounds on his face were quickly restored to normal. When he saw that, he jumped to hit him repeatedly and said let's continue to recreate the old Dokabi mountain, then he punched Sung Wan with a 150 kilograms punch. You need to squeeze him out more, can you, use enough energy to prolong the regeneration. He would transfer the remaining energy to his right hand and believe in his own regenerative power. Moments later, after a series of blows, Sung Wan also returned to his original form. He said he would kill him and didn't care anymore. Suddenly Sung Wan said as if he forgot that there were two people here, Jae Hyuk immediately appeared behind him. Jae Hyuk holds a gun in his hand and says he will return the money he borrowed, he still has a lot of money. Immediately he used his weapon to attack him. Duoxini also did not stand still but quickly charged. Jae Hyuk used a gun to shoot continuously at him but he used his hand to shield him and approached him. When he approached him, he used a 100 kilograms fist to punch Jae Hyuk. He almost got punched if he couldn't dodge. Jae Hyuk also summoned a weapon about to hit him but was stopped. Duoxini said his face looked familiar. He remembered him. He mentioned Unbi and said he was the boyfriend of that whore right. Jae Hyuk saw that he finally remembered, he was the one who caused it. It all started when Unbi told him that he had seen monsters, Jae Hyuk heard that and only told her to talk in the sky. Unbi then said that she talked to them just now, it seems they want her to sign a contract with them in return they will give her what she wants, that's what they said. But Jae Hyuk laughed and told her there's no such thing as ghosts, maybe she's been playing games too much lately, so she's just virtual games, then he told her not to joke anymore and took her out to eat. Since that day he started to see Unbi less and less, when he met her again but still didn't know what she went through, she looked like a completely different person. When they met again, Jae Hyuk asked Unbi why I couldn't contact her recently, and who was the person next to her. At that time, it was Duoxini who was next to Unbi, she heard that it was a guy in school who was also the leader of her club. Jae Hyuk pulled Unbi's hand and told her to come talk to me for a while but she refused him and let go of her hand saying she had to go to a club meeting. Jae Hyuk doesn't think this is normal, he'd better follow her. At the familiar base, the leader asked her why she didn't go hunting recently, he told her to bring her strength back. Unbi said she couldn't continue anymore, he saw that and said she was the one who signed a contract with Gui. She was also the one who agreed to his request and now demanded to stop. Jae Hyuk stood outside watching and listening to stories about Gui or hunting, but didn't understand anything. Unbi said that the more she did that, the less she felt like she was herself so she wanted to stop. 
Suddenly, Duoxini strangles her saying stop, so become a part of his power. Jae Hyuk could only stand still in the dark corner observing this but couldn't do anything at that time. Now, after Duoxini recognized him, he said the girl couldn't overcome her lust and went crazy. Thanks to him, it didn't turn into Gui, should be thanking him. Jae Hyuk heard that and threw his fist and said don't play with me. But his weapon was not aimed at all, his arm was not damaged, seeing that he said that he probably couldn't make an ally either. Suddenly his arm was damaged, it was the effect of the attack earlier that upgraded the weapon. As soon as he sat down for his arm, Jae Hyuk held the gun to his head, he even asked him if he knew what Unbi said in the last moments of her life. She laughed and said she didn't become a monster in the end. When he heard that, he said that he seemed to be the one who turned into a monster. Jae Hyuk immediately attacked him with a gun and used all the money for this shot. The shot caused Duoxini to scream and push him away but he still said it was just a normal attack, he could handle 10 like that. Immediately, he used his shield to block the attacks. Jae Hyuk continued to use weapons to attack him continuously. But he seems to be getting weaker, the shots are getting less and less money, Jae Hyuk is about to lose. Finally, the gun stopped and couldn't shoot anymore, if Jae Hyuk loses this battle, he never knows when he will have such a good opportunity again. Duoxini saw him stop attacking and laughed loudly and asked if he was done, Jae Hyuk saw that he was fine and froze. He had saved as much as he could for this moment, it couldn't be. Suddenly, the Gui appeared and said there was a new move specifically for him, the secret technique of borrowing the soul, and asked him if he wanted to use it. Jae Hyuk gritted his teeth and said push to the limit, Gui immediately agreed. The Duoxini said he was fed up with this, can it be over? Suddenly he looked up and saw Jae Hyuk still holding the gun in his hand, he said he still had one last shot. Finally, a bullet flew out of the gun and shot straight at Duoxini. Then Jae Hyuk knelt on the floor panting because he was so tired from running out of energy. On this side, he was screaming in monster form. The Gui said that due to the influence of the secret technique, he wouldn't be able to borrow its power until the money was paid off. But Jae Hyuk said it didn't matter because he already achieved his goal. The Gui said that even though he has achieved his goal, it still needs more strength to achieve its goal of ascending, so please make sure to pay enough for the interest of the secret technique. Jae Hyuk heard that and asked what interest, what is he saying? Duoxini is screaming at his body losing pieces how could this happen to him, he won't let it end like this, he has to get revenge on them. Sung A.H. saw this and asked the boss if he was okay, Duoxini heard it and remembered that she was still here. He immediately ate seeing Ga's Gui and returned to normal, the second half began. Jae Hyuk didn't expect this to happen, even if he absorbed a Gui. It would only increase his strength, but not necessarily restore his fighting strength. He had to move but his body wouldn't move, is this the end? Suddenly he saw Sung Wan appear in front of him, he has reached his limit already. But now you're the only one who's disabled but not disabled. Duoxini feels touched but he doesn't have a tear gland so he'll let the two of you go to the top of the closet to watch the chickens. Saying that, he jumped up and used a 100 kilograms punch to attack them, how can he block it now? Suddenly someone cut his arm and stopped him, it was Sangmin. He saw that his ally had just attacked him and shouted, but Sangmin did not answer, but directly rushed to tie his hands and feet. Duok couldn't fight back, was it because he lost too much strength in the fight just now or because he was getting stronger? He couldn't move at all, Eoduxini's power was now on another level. Sangmin went up to him and told him that Dokabi Mountain was his. He heard that and angrily said that you betrayed him just because of that. Hearing these two words of betrayal, Sang Min immediately said that from the beginning this is just a strong alliance, right? Now Duoxini can only stand there cursing him but not doing anything, now he's not the same age as Sang Min. Immediately, he controlled the ropes that wrapped him tightly, causing Duoxini to be defeated instantly. Everyone on the outside was shocked at this scene. Duoxini was still indignant at being betrayed but was quickly absorbed by Sang Min. Then a key particle of the Sinner of Wrath fell into the hands of Eoduxini. Sung Wan suddenly called his friend to say long time no see. Sang Min also returned to say two words everyone. Jae Hyuk doesn't know what to say when he hears these two words, his very existence makes him feel scared. After all, that guy is holding so many sins, he's too dangerous. Jae Hyuk yelled at them to run away. Sang Min said not to run, then ordered them to kneel. 
All could not resist but reflexively had to kneel on the ground. Sang Min saw them and said that it was their scared face when facing him. He told Sung Wan to quickly show him his scared face. Seeing his anger, Sang Min said he was the top of the top. Sung Wan was always reliable in times of trouble. But you still haven't left the habit of sticking your nose into other people's affairs. Sang Min has long hated that habit of his, a useless guy like you, but acting like it's useful. But it must have helped, he meant Gui's strength and not his own, who used to be so scared that he hid behind his back at times like this, suddenly acting like he was famous. Sang Min hates him every time he pretends to like that even more after learning the truth later. Sung Wan heard these words and asked if that's what he's been thinking about him since then. Sang Min said he's the strongest guy here right now, then ordered everyone to kneel and beg him to go. Sung Wan stood up and said that compared to the times he was beaten since then, it didn't hurt as much as Sang Min's words just said. Why did things turn out like this? He held out his hand and said stop this Sang Min. Immediately he attacked him and told him to stop making that fake face. Sung Wan was immediately kicked out after that. He tried to open his eyes to see what everyone was saying but couldn't hear anything. This feeling he had experienced before, even do he cried again. You're so tired but you need to get up, everyone don't make that face. He had no choice but to fight alone, but why did he feel so tired, he would lie here and rest for a while. Do he quickly ran and called Sung Wan to hug him and cry, Jae Hyuk was also shocked that he was dead. Do he hugged him and cried bitterly, it can't be, she still wants him to be with her. Sung Wan was lost in another dimension, he remembered when he was attacked by Sangmin but now the wound on his stomach is gone but what the hell is this place? Chung Mang appeared and asked him if it felt familiar, after all, he had been here before. Sung Wan doesn't remember coming here after hearing that, Chung bringing it on seems like he forgot the existence of this place after going through a big shock. Long ago after he was able to see it, it was waiting for him because it had to confirm if he was fit to be his partner in the future. But at that time he was too young to desire anything and he gave up his desires because he was too weak, hiding behind other people all day. However because of that intense desire, the desire to be saved was inside of him. When he was a child, his family had a traffic accident, at that time Chung Mang appeared and he asked him to please save me. It said that if you feel that things are too harsh, you can stop now. Sung Wan said he was tired and now he wants to rest but he still has work to do. Chung Mang heard that and told him to remember that its innate ability is not regenerative, its ability is. Suddenly Sung Wan woke up full of strength, he directly rushed to attack Sang Min immediately but he teleported and dodged. He appeared behind you and said you must have been absorbed too, then attacked through Sung Wan like before. He immediately turned around and bit Sang Min's hand. Eoduxini also realized that he seemed to have awakened his innate ability. Mountain Dokabi's ability is not a regeneration, it is a terrifying ability equal to that of the four gods, King Gui, Dragon Fruit and White Tiger, which is immortality. Confronting this ability is troublesome in that after each regeneration, it will become stronger. Earlier in the place, Chung Mang said that the process of geification had begun, he reached out his hand to rub his head and told him to keep this in mind always remember who you are. His goal is not immortality, immortality or not, they have the power to defeat Eoduxini. His body began to change, suddenly Chung Mang called Sung Wan about to say something but stopped talking. Then he returned to reality and stood here, Sang Min saw how arrogant someone had been swallowed by Gui, then immediately attacked through his body. When Du He saw this scene, he shouted and covered his eyes with his hand, Jae Hyuk told her it was okay. It was a camouflage afterimage that was activated as soon as the attack reached him. Si Young was also surprised that it was a copy. Jae Hyuk said maybe it was because he moved too fast while changing his disguise, because he lost consciousness, he fought in different styles. Sang Min summoned the black lightning and quickly caught him, seeing Sung Wan standing still, he smiled evilly, now it's the next person's turn. Suddenly turning around, the smile was gone. Sung Wan grabbed him and punched him in the face and pushed him away. Sang Min was attacked and didn't expect him to attack before he recovered his broken arm, that's crazy. Haran watching from the sidelines also felt that he might win, Jin Wu said he could definitely beat him. Suddenly Sung Wan turned and met his eyes, Jin Wu immediately raised his hand to cheer him up. But just then he saw the prey that rushed towards Jin Wu, 
Suddenly an arm covered in front of Jinwoo's face and it was Du He. She walked over to him and hugged him and said she was glad he was still alive and thanked him. Immediately Sungwin returned to his normal state telling her not to cry but he was fine. Du He hugged him saying she really thought he was dead. Sung Wan also apologized for scaring her. Sang Min saw the scene of men and women hugging each other and angrily said they did useless things. Suddenly Du He with tears turned around and said Sang Min begged him to stop. Sang Min suddenly shouted loudly. The Gui next to him said Eo Duxini had restored to his original form. They had achieved their purpose here and that's it. Sang Min heard the words and immediately shouted. It's so annoying. It's annoying and tells them next time not to get out of his hands. Before it's done, then disappear. Sung Wan suddenly fell to the ground. To be honest, he couldn't even stand up just now. It's a relief. When Du He saw that, she hit him with her hand and said that she really thought he was dead just now. Suddenly Sung Wan grabbed her hand and told her to stop, but seeing Do He's trembling hands and scared face, he could only say everything was fine. Jae Hyuk came over and said good job guys, but Eo Duxini got lost and Sung Wan asked him what to do now. Jae Hyuk said move it to calculate later, now rest for a while. On this side, Haran looked at the captain sitting in front of the wall and didn't know what to say. Jae Hyuk suddenly said he was hungry and asked Sung Wan to buy me a loaf of bread, now he's empty. Sung Wan heard that and thought he knew how much money he had spent, to the point of being broke, but he decided not to buy it for him. Three days after the battle, everyone had already returned to their normal lives. They're not sure if they've lost and we're not sure they've won either, so let's just rest for a while. They would have fainted if they knew what he was going through at that time. Maybe one of them was also the Devil Gui. Before that, after the leader was solved, there was still Haran and Jinwoo. Jae Hyuk asked how they should be handled, but Si Young immediately pulled out his weapon and said to kill them all. The two of them immediately asked for forgiveness. Maybe you don't need it yet, but if you forgive them, they can definitely help you a lot one day. Si Young heard that and asked if they had any evidence to believe those words. Haran swore on the honor of Adokabi and also promised him, she didn't know what kind of person Duoxini was in your eyes but he was still their captain. If he hadn't been betrayed midway, he wouldn't have lost so easily, even if she couldn't win against Eoduxini, she'd have to let him know. Jaehyuk said he has no problem with it, after all he has no grudge against them, Do he is like everyone else. In the end Sung Wan said just aside, the other two, seeing that their lives were spared, thanked him and said they would never forget his kindness. That's how they dealt with the remaining Dokabi. Sung Wan was walking when he saw Du He and Jae Hyuk. Jae Hyuk saw his tired face and asked. Sung Wan said something happened because his hunting mode automatically activated three days in a row. Jae Hyuk didn't know what they were talking about but swooped over to Sung Wan and asked him to stop by the snack bar. He saw that and told him he was possessed by a ghost that ate bread before he died or something. Jae Hyuk said it was almost like he was haunted by a loan shark. Jae Hyuk looked happy but his power was sealed from the last battle. At Jae Hyuk's house, when his father knew that his mother sent him a lot of money, he told her not to secretly give him money, or else he would send her away with him. And for some reason his pension was also frozen. Suddenly Sung Wan asked if they couldn't contact Si Young either, he's been absent from school for three days. In a certain palace, someone reported that King Duoxini had been defeated, that he had been defeated at the hands of Eo Duoxini who had watched the battle between him and the mountain Dokabi. The other king laughed and said that Eo Duxini hasn't changed at all, but since Duoxini is defeated so quickly, this is really interesting. A new day at school, Sung Wan was walking in the hallway when he saw the person who had been stalking Si Young before, standing in front of the window looking at the classroom looking for her. Seeing him, he thought that lust still didn't disappear even though the devil Gui was destroyed. Suddenly Haran called Sung Wan. She said she still had doubts at that time that she couldn't tell him, it was better that they meet and talk in person, he promised to come to her after school. After school Sung Wan went to see Haran as promised, he went straight to the point and asked what was all about. Haran asked the girl she fought with, when she heard she hadn't been to school for a few days, she said so. The story that Haran couldn't tell him that day, she didn't know who the enemy was. Hearing that, they were surprised, Sung Wan told her that Si Young wasn't on their side. Haran said she wasn't entirely sure but the power she used when she won the match that day, and those who gave it power right now are hiding in this very school. The two of them were even more surprised to hear that, 
They've already defeated all the Gui demons that were hanging around the school. Haran then said that there is a person who is very good at hiding, but you are not strong enough to detect him right now. Before Haran joined the school they were collecting Gui demons, she wasn't sure at the time but at one point she found signs of them gathering in the school. Sung Wan heard about it and said it was a coincidence that Si Young talked to them too, and thought they thought it was Haran's doing. Haran shook his head and said he was chasing them but they caught her. At that moment she was standing between two choices, destroy them or recruit them to her side before you guys get involved. Haran didn't know who they were either but the captain said that those guys used something as bait to catch the Gui, and all the Gui demons gathered here until now have never come back. Haran was only suspicious of Si Young. The time she saw the captain react so impatiently was when she cooperated with them. Although he aimed to become the Gui king, his original goal was to defeat them, in the past the captain had lost to them. After saying that, Haran turned around to say that she had finished speaking anyway. Maybe it was her fault that the girl got out of her mind. Sung Wan said they will also investigate so if you find anything, let them know. He was thinking what to do now because Dohi's ability couldn't find them. Suddenly he turned around and saw Do He burning with will to strengthen, then she pulled him away. At a certain building, a monster came in and used the teleport ring to go to the field. The guy next to him told him to be late and the extra time was almost over. The prize for the winner is said to be the key grain of laziness, if he wins he gets the fourth seed. But the other guy said that the rookie this time is quite strong, there is no way to eat it in one shot. The masked man spoke about the events of the day, on the red corner the mukbang ancestor, who would devour everything, the devil Gui said. And on the green corner, the incoming rookie will be able to use the power of Gui, a rising star who owns the tiger Jiangsen Siyun. The masked man shouted the start of the match, and immediately the big mouth Gui rushed to attack Siyun first. But she jumped up causing it to lose momentum and hit the wall behind, it moved really fast. The Gui cried out from the hole in the wall. The referee said that the devil Gui was out of the ring. If he didn't return to the arena after 10 hours of counting, he would be immediately disqualified. Just counting for one hour, it quickly jumped into the air, preparing to land to attack Si Young. It appeared in front of her and punched her right in the face. Si Young had underestimated it for its simple appearance, and its speed and power, isn't it absurd? Just as she was thinking, she was suddenly attacked by another Gui in the stomach. Si Young didn't know what she was doing here. Before that, after handling the remaining Dokabi, Sung Wan told him to go home, he was tired and didn't want to do anything. At that time, Si Young also greeted everyone and told him to go first. Sung Wan told her to go with her, she said it was okay. Jae Hyuk said that he wanted to ask him about his strength before, but that should be for later. After leaving, Si Young went to a quiet place and leaned against the wall with a sigh. Boksal asked her for her previous strength, she was about to say something when the masked man appeared again. He said it was a great match, Boksal saw him and asked if he did it right. The masked man said he was just giving it a chance, he brought Boksal back to life. He held something out in front of Si Young saying so much power she didn't want to have. Si Young heard that and reached for strength, remembering what those stronger than her could have done. Boksal tells them they don't need it and sends the mask man away but seeing Si Young step up to take the item he gave her, she says of course they need strength. And now that she's in this arena, yes Si Young needs more strength that's why she's here. Right after that, she took her sword to attack the other big mouth Gui, it used its teeth to stop her blade but Si Young said that the mouth has damaged the body, are you sure it can be eaten? Immediately she used the tiger vibration to destroy the Gui immediately. The referee also announced the winner was Si Young. And the winner gets the key particle of laziness. The next day the three met at school. Jae Hyuk asked him if it was confirmed and Sung Wan said they still haven't met him, he just wanted to let him know first. Jae Hyuk heard him tell everything and said that Si Young can do it which surprised him too and did he say there was something inside the school, and then he turned to look at Do He. But she said with her current strength she couldn't detect them. Jae Hyuk wondered how strong the man was to be able to hide his presence and tracks so perfectly. Jae Hyuk is now completely helpless to help the two of them, he used a lot of strength last time. Sung Wan immediately said that he and Do He will take care of it, hearing that he apologized even though he owed them both help last time. Do He says don't worry about it, she needs to get stronger quickly to find them and tells Jae Hyuk he needs to prioritize restoring his strength first. But first Jae Hyuk has to deal with this evil spirit before he can help the two of them, 
Then they say hello and leave. Suddenly someone ran past Sung Wan. There was also a familiar voice telling him to hurry up. It was Seo An and his two juniors sitting on this guy's Aaron's table. He ran over to say that the food they wanted was sold out. Hearing that, Seo An immediately waved his hand to hit him in the face and cursed at him. Some of his classmates saw that but didn't dare to cough. The other friend was beaten and scolded and said he would go find it again. Sung Wan saw that he still had all his habits and still bullied his friends. But suddenly he remembered what Sang Min had said earlier, telling him not to worry about how much money. Now that you're here, they won't do anything, but when you're not, they'll start messing with Sang Min again, he can't protect you all the time. Remembering that made Sung Wan's hand suddenly stop and he decided not to jump in anymore. He turned to go back to class, was walking when he saw something that everyone was crowded with, and when he looked at it, he saw that the boy who had bitten back Seo and said that they had caused the problem first. Seo and immediately walked up to him and said he would let him know. At this moment the teacher stopped them and told them to go to the infirmary first if they were injured and also called Han Jong to follow him. That night Sung Wan was hunting Gui again, but Du He said that he didn't move and let that Gui run away. Du He said since the match with Sang Min that he was acting a bit strange, Sung Wan could only say sorry. Suddenly he asked her if she was doing well now, did she think her generosity made him that bad? When he was fighting Dokabi, Sang Mon said something he couldn't forget. Du He said it was only because of the devil Gui affecting him, today Sung Wan saw the bastards tormenting Sang Min doing the same to someone else. He wanted to help but hesitated because he remembered what Sang Min said. Suddenly Jongsen Tiger appeared and told him not to worry about such things, it won't help. Sung Wan asked where Si Young was, Boxel said he wanted to talk more but didn't have much time so he would say it, he needed you to beat Si Young. 